Don Dixon image from a, a cover of a book by Mike McCollum just showing what a, a floating city might look like floating uh, in an atmosphere. Here's another image. This is Michael Carroll, who is a science fiction artist. He, in fact, did this illustration based on some of my, uh, some of my work. And he said, well, what if you dive down a little bit lower, take these cities down deeper into the atmosphere? Well, it's going to get pretty hot. Uh, but I think what he was thinking is that you could use these cities, uh, take them down and low, lower bathospheres into the atmosphere in order to get at some of the resources that are further down in the atmosphere or perhaps to give you some uh, scientific uh, exploration of the lower atmosphere of Venus. Well, if we can do one city in the atmosphere of Venus, uh, just one city of perhaps 100,000 inhabitants, uh, why not many? Uh, you could put lots of cities in the atmosphere of Venus, and there's a lot of area in the atmosphere of Venus. There's millions and millions of square kilometers uh, on Venus. And I just have to show this one, I guess. This is uh, a story that I have in the most recent issue of uh, Asimov Science Fiction Magazine that's sort of showing uh, showing some of my thoughts about the atmosphere of Venus and people floating around in uh, their own personal, personal zeppelins uh, on the planet Venus. So it's, uh, this is your uh, little advertisement. But I actually, I think that's kind of a cute, uh, cute illustration. Well, when you go further on, uh, how about going further? What about terraforming? Can you actually terraform Venus? Well, for those few of you who don't know, terraforming is the idea that you can alter a planet's environment to make it like the Earth. Terraforming means forming it like the Earth. Well, actually, Carl Sagan uh, was one of the first people to propose terraforming Venus. He proposed it in 1961, uh, very shortly after it was learned that Venus has a thick carbon dioxide atmosphere and was not Earth-like at all. Well. He proposed using microbes to convert the carbon dioxide atmosphere into oxygen. Uh, and since then, science fiction writers have loved this idea. They've said, well, let's terraform Venus, let's terraform Mars, let's terraform everything. Uh, it turns out it's a very difficult process. Uh, three decades after he proposed it, even Carl Sagan said, well, turns out we were a little naive in thinking how easy it would be to terraform Venus. Uh, you can't just throw some microbes into the atmosphere and hope that it will get terraformed. It's harder than that. The atmosphere is too thick. To terraform it, we need to get rid of atmosphere. It just has way too much atmosphere. It's a real tragedy of our solar system. Mars has too little atmosphere. Venus has too much. What I'd really like to do is swap the two planets, and they'd both be about right. Uh, that turns out to be beyond current technology. but. Terraforming Venus, what can we do? We could blast away the atmosphere. We could convert it into carbonate rocks. We could use a solar shield to freeze the carbon dioxide. That's sort of the wackiest idea, but uh, G. David Nordley has worked hard on, on proposing that. Uh, well, it may not be easy, but it does seem like it would be possible. At least it's not beyond the bounds of the laws of physics. So. Why terraform? Well, there's another reason to terraform, and that's if we learn to terraform other planets, it gives us scientific knowledge about our own planet. In fact, right now, we are changing the climate of Earth. Uh, if there's any people who disagree with that, come talk to me later. Uh, I can explain the science of the greenhouse effect. Uh, but we're changing the atmosphere of Earth. It would be nice to learn to do this deliberately and to experiment on another planet uh, before we inadvertently make mistakes on our own. Well, terraforming is one thing. You might be able to do interesting things on Venus without actually going all the way to terraforming it. There is a process called echopoiesis, which means to start an ecosystem. And we might be able to put an ecosystem into the atmosphere of Venus without taking it all the way to an Earth-like planet, uh, just make it a bioengineered 
planet that life would live on. Well, we need to engineer plants to incorporate gas bladders to make them float in the hospitable region. Uh, the example I like to use is kelp. Here is kelp, and in fact, kelp has black gas bladders. The gas bladders on kelp allow it to float on the ocean, uh, but with genetic engineering, it's not at all clear that we couldn't do exactly this and fill these with oxygen, oxygen and nitrogen, and float them in the atmosphere of Venus. So it's like I'm running out of time here. Uh, but in conclusion, uh, Venus is Earth's sister planet. In many ways, it's the most Earth-like planet in the solar system. Not at the surface, but above the surface. So the surface is hard, but the atmosphere of Venus is ideal. It's ideal in temperature, it's ideal in pressure. It's a place that we could, in principle, uh, support human life on a large scale. We could probably support more people in the atmosphere of Venus than presently live on the entire globe of the Earth. Uh, so uh, think about Mars. I like Mars. Let's think about Mars. Let's consider moving to Mars as well. Uh, but there is a serious case for Venus that maybe the planet that we should explore and colonize first uh, is not our neighbor further from the sun, but our next neighbor inward. Uh, let's colonize Venus. So thank you. Can, I can answer questions and they'll totally kick me off the podium. So. Uh, radiation isn't really a problem on Venus. Uh, it turns out radiation, there's uh, cosmic rays from the sun, uh, solar radiation. Then there's cosmic rays from, uh, okay, here you go. And then there's cosmic rays, galactic cosmic rays. Uh, but the atmospheric density at the level that we're going to be colonizing uh, is really 10 tons per meter. That's lots of shielding. So we're good with radiation, actually. We're fine. Sure. Yeah, maybe you should stand at the microphone. It is hard to hear. The mic's right there in the center. Kazimierz uh, from Poland. We must change on Venus temperature, we must change pressure, we must change atmosphere, and what was the uh, day? Day yes. is too long. We, Correct. It, do you think we, we must change also d day? How long? The day? day is indeed a problem. At the atmospheric level that we're talking about, the day on the surface turns out not to be important. Uh, because the wind blows around the planet much faster than the planet rotates. At the, atmospheric, uh, at the atmospheric level of interest, uh, you, need, you will be blowing around the planet about every four days. So you'll be operating, unfortunately, on a, a four-day cycle instead of a, a one-day cycle. So the day-night cycle will, in fact, have to be adjusted with artificial light. But I wish I could solve that, but that's a really hard problem to solve. <laughs> Well, getting to the day-night cycle, would there be a lot of uh, variation in amplitude of this sweet spot as the atmosphere cools at night? I mean, would your there yeah. things be floating up and down with that cycle? You would think that that would be true, but oddly enough, uh, Venus does not have a whole lot of diurnal variation between day and night. Uh, it's basically because that atmosphere is so thick that it, it has a huge heat capacity, so it doesn't cool down very much between day and night. The cities might cool down somewhat because they won't be radiatively heated one, anymore. One possible way to control the day-night cycle in your floating mm -hmm. cities, <clears throat> I noticed those balloons were transparent, mm -hmm. make them photochromic, mm -hmm. and, control, and control that on both sides of the planet. Mm -hmm. So you could just force the usual 24-day cycle that we're used to. Yeah. Yeah, certainly on the day side of the planet, that would be easy. On the night side, they'd have to be luminous as well. But that is a, it's a technological solution. Mm, well, that would seem easy. You could probably mm -hmm. copy stuff from bioluminescence. Mm -hmm. That would be cool, actually. That's a, that's a cool idea. As a matter of fact, I can just see it now. The nocturnal Venusian cities okay. looking like really, really big jellyfish. Okay, I think the next speaker is ready. If it's a really quick question, I'll try and answer it. Um, 
I was just thinking about, you know, generating energy and so forth, you know, for your civilization mm -hmm. on, on Venus, because we'll probably do both, Mars and Venus, simultaneously. But um, isn't there a possibility of a battery effect because of the sulfuric acid? You could you'd maybe mm -hmm. drop down a cable or something. You could maybe do some kind of a battery effect there. Yeah, the question is whether we can get chemical energy out of the sulfuric acid. Probably in order to do that, we would have to uh, get metals and other resources from the surface. So my guess is that it would take more mass to do that than the energy that you'd gain. But, you know, certainly clever chemical engineers will be needed for this project. So maybe we should look at that in more detail. Okay, next. <laughs> 